Hey, I don't know if you are part of the moral police task force out there, but let me tell you something. Nobody ever hired you for that job. Um, you're, you're doing stuff illegally. You're pulling people over illegally. You see, I, I drive around in my car here and knock on wood, I haven't been pulled over in a long time. Uh, but, you know, getting pulled over is never a fun thing. You know, you see those lights flashing behind you and you go into a little mini panic and then you automatically feel bad because you're trying to figure out what it is that you've done wrong. And normally there is something you've done wrong. You've been pulled over by a legitimate police officer. Now, I've never been pulled over by somebody that is faking being a police officer. But I, I don't know what you do in those situations, you know? Somebody comes up to your window, you know, they're not even a police officer, and they, they just say, listen, I'm not a police officer hired by the, the state or the city, but, um, you know, I, I'm taking it upon myself to make a citizen's arrest for you because you were speeding. You just get out of here. Who do you think you are? Just leave. Leave me alone. I'm going to call the police on you. You know, that... There's people who do that kind of stuff, I've heard. And you got to be careful, especially people who want to kidnap or something. But, you know, we've got so many people out there within the spiritual world that are doing just that. They're, they're legalists. And, you know, legalism, the, the essence of legalism is not always, or maybe not even primarily, self-righteousness. You see, oftentimes we think of legalists and we think they just think there's something so great. And oftentimes they do. And uh, that is the problem. But more often than not, for most of us, for most of you, for me, it has to do with control. You see, we want to control things. It's not as if we're trying to bring about something evil and we, we um, you know, want to make you feel bad. And we love people pulling people over. Whenever you're, we're, we're legalists, it's, it's that we want to control things and we want things to be better. I mean, that, that's it. That's the, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make life better for someone else. We're trying to, we're trying to make people do the right thing. And so we become legalists because we think we can control things. You know, there's very few things in this world that God has given us control over. I mean, we can't even control ourselves and, and pull ourselves over, but we're constantly pulling other people over, you know, flashing our lights and telling them everything they've done wrong. People that God has never placed uh, us over in any sense. You know, we do this with our kids, of course. You know, we, we tell them when to go to bed and to get up and go to school. And, and, you know, we do control that. God has placed us in a position of control over our kids just for a certain period of time. And then you got to start releasing that control uh, at some point whenever you, you sense that they are able to, able to be mature and, and to take over their own lives. We've got, that, that's a very hard thing for parents to do is to release their children out into the world and to cease their control. We do this often um, with our spouse. You know, we we are always attempting to control our spouse, especially right after you first get married. You're trying to change them, you're trying to make them and shape them into your image, into the image that you believe they ought to be. And it's never a bad thing that we're trying to do. We're not trying to be evil. We're just trying to control things. We're trying to set the board of life up in such a way to where whoever is in our path, we take and we put them in their proper place the way we see it. You know, it's what you see in Romans chapter um, chapter 13 where, where uh, or chapter 14 where you have the person who is turning on their lights on the people who are eating meat sacrificed to idols. Now you're, you're a new Christian, you're eating just the regular meat that everybody else eats, but it's, it's been sacrificed to an idol. So I got to turn on my lights and pull you over and tell you that's just wrong. You can't do that. And in, in that passage, God, Paul has some pretty strong things to say. He says, you know, who are you? to try to control the servant of another before the other person who is actually in control, God, that person stands or falls, not you, 
Why do you think you're in control of this person? Besides the fact that you're you're telling them about things and trying to control them in things that the Bible doesn't even speak of, and that's often the case, you know, we're trying to control the little things of life for our spouse or for our kids, things that aren't really as important as we think they are, that have nothing to do with really their spirituality. They're just what we want, how we want them to behave, what we want them to, to do, what we want them to eat or drink or, or watch on television or, or any number of things. We, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to control them because this is the way we want it. We do this also in, a doct in, our, in the doctrinal world with theology. We try to control other people's theology. We, uh, you know, we're the doctrinal police. We're pulling people over left and right, telling them everything that they got wrong, especially on social media. My goodness, there's so many people getting pulled over. You know, everything you post, it feels like you get pulled over. There's certain people that whenever I see their lights behind me, I see an email come in from them. I see a comment, you know, it pops up and says, so-and-so's made a comment. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, they've got their lights on. I know it because that's just the way that person is. There, there are no people, you know, we're, we're filled with, the world is filled with so many no people, no, very few yes people, very few people who just let you drive on by, you know, even if you are speeding, they, uh, they, uh, very few people let you drive on by in the doctrinal world and in the moral world. You know, I, I don't know, you know, if you could count, if you could try to figure out how many people God has really placed you over. How many is there? I mean, I, I think there's maybe one. Maybe it's you, yourself. And even then, again, you can't control yourself, but we feel like we're, we have the obligation to step in and, and uh, give tickets to just about everybody. Um, but you know, I mean, unless you're, unless you're someone that they have given, somebody else has given you control of their life or at least placed themselves under you in such a way to where they are asking for your help and your, your, uh, your correction, you're not in control of them. I mean, it's not as if you can't come to people and give people advice, but my goodness, uh, be, be careful with this. You're not official. You're not hired to do this kind of stuff. And uh, even then, I mean, if, if you're a pastor, you know, if, if uh, you're a pastor, you're, you're, certain people have been placed a certain part of their lives under you and asked you to disciple them and maybe then, but you know, you're, you're, you're maybe you're going to all your friends and you're straightening all your friends out, having talks with them, your, your family members, your brothers, your sisters, your, your grown up kids, your your coworkers and you're just constantly pulling them over. Who gave you control over them? Who told you to correct them? Who told you to publicly uh, call them out and express all the things that you feel they're doing wrong and how they can straighten everything out? Who, who gave you that job? Nobody did. You say, well, look at the way Jesus did things and the way that, that the apostles did things. Yeah, they, they were in control because, because they were apostles and it was Jesus. But you're not an apostle and you're not Jesus. And so you, you, you can't, unless they have come to you and said to you, hey, will you, will you let me know all the things that I'm doing wrong? I, I place myself under you. I respect you enough to, to listen to you. Then, then yes, you can make the decision of whether you help that person out and whether you can call them out on things. But if they haven't placed you there, you have no business calling them out. You have no business trying to play the Holy Spirit in their lives. They are the servant of another and you have to trust. And, and that's what it is. I mean, whenever we're legalists, we want to control things. And it's so hard for us just to let things be and to trust God. You see this oftentimes when people are given the gospel and, and preaching the gospel. We want to control it by making sure everybody knows, not only do you, do you trust in Jesus, but here's all the things you do afterwards. Here's how you're supposed to straighten your life out. You've got to quit drinking. You've got to change your lifestyle. You know, and deal with this first in your life because this is what I say you have to do. 
because I, I don't like you being out there calling yourself a Christian and acting in ways that I don't like. Therefore, we try to control it. We try to sanctify them first and then allow them into the kingdom. And you know, I love Martin Lloyd-Jones statement about this. If the true gospel is being preached, when the true gospel is being preached, there's always a risk. And, and being gracious is risky. It's a hard thing to do to be gracious because we don't have control. When you're gracious to someone, you're leaving them in the hands of someone else. And that's, that's the opposite of control. That's the opposite of legalism is grace. And a few of us just naturally come with grace. But boy, whenever you come across someone who is really gracious and really trusts in the Lord and realizes they're not in control, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. Those are, those are people who are, Paul says in Romans chapter 14, they are strong in the faith. The weaker ones are the ones who are trying to control everything. He calls them the weaker brethren. Chuck Swindoll calls these people professional weaker brethren. You may be a professional weaker brethren, a weaker brother and sister, thinking you can control everything. But the greatest thing you can do, because it's hard. I know it's hard. I've tried to control people, and I, I still do. And it's hard. But to be able to hand that over to the Lord is not only... the in the best interest of that other person, but it's in your own best interest for your own sanctification so that you are no longer in this aspect a weaker brother or sister. You're not in control as much as you think you are. None of us are. 